All right. Oh no! Look at that green screen. How dare it be visible? Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well today. We're gonna be playing some Star Wars. The oh my god, Star Wars: The Old Republic. And uh, there it is. Beautiful darkness. The darkness has uh, uh, reached reached thine eyes. Um, we're gonna be going over the news today, and today's gonna be a fairly chill day. Fairly relaxed day. The green hurts your eyes. It is bright. It is. It is bright. It is. It is bare green. It is. Uh, it's, it's so green that it will reflect green back on my shoulders just a little bit. Can you see it? It's just very ever so slightly yellowy green where the lights are bouncing backwards back at me. It's crazy. It's fun. I like. I like. I like green screen math and science. It's some neat stuff. Um, we're gonna start by going over the news today. Um, and before that, we're gonna say hi to some people in chat. Hey there, Robert over on YouTube. Robert Podorczyk, possibly? Uh, hello, wish you all happy and nice day. Later I'll go log in and game. Have fun. Have fun. Thanks for the nice wishes. And the elusive man says, I'll always love SOTOR. Need to get back in soon. I like JR was like, you need to play. Hey, JR. And hey, everybody over on the Twitch side of things. Um, we have a new player in chat that says... Scruffy looking nerf herder. Sorry. <laughs> DCH, thank you very much. A very special ahoy to the great Sir Teresa. Happy 45 months. Oh my god. That's 12, 24, 36. Oh my gosh, you're almost at a full four years. Thank you, DCH. That's crazy. Thriller Killer says, I consider myself a new player as I have played on and off for years, but I really only just got into it. Seriously. And so have a few friends. And so have a few friends. Would it be more beneficial to join an existing guild or for us to start our own? Oh, hey there. That is a great question, Thriller Killer. So most players, when they come in here asking about guilds, they're often asking, like, I don't have any friends. How do I make friends? And we're like, go check out this awesome tool that we made called the SOTOR Guild Finder. However, you have a fairly unique dilemma. You already have some friends who are playing together. So first off, just so you're on the same uh, technical page, you need to have at least the four people total real people not characters four Help people thank you thanks diabolic thanks to you too your second one thank you um you need to have at least four people in your group together to make a guild so if you don't even have four friends or you don't have three friends plus yourself then you guys won't be able to really create a guild without some outside help anyway now on out of the technical side of things and on more to the social side of things. So personally, personally, I think I'd recommend looking around for a guild for you guys to join together using the using the guild finder, guilds and SOTOR that I linked for you in the Twitch chat and look for one that you think you guys might like all together or have if someone's quote unquote leading the group, have them pick one and, and, and instruct the others how to how to join. And that's because that is because it's very frequent that people will start playing with friends and then the friends will peter out of the game. It's just a natural. Everyone has different interests and hobbies and stuff like that. So you'll play together for like a month and then out of the four of you, only one of you by the end of the month is still playing the game. It's a pretty, pretty normal thing that happens with any video game as far as I can tell, especially MMORPGs that you can put really varying amounts of time into them. And that way, uh, you've already made some friends in the guild, and you can keep playing, or your friend can keep playing. And um, if anyone else wants to hop back in, uh, they'll have a nice little little home to jump back into in addition to playing with their one singular friend that's still playing, you know? Now, uh, the downside of that is if you don't want to make other friends, Maybe you don't. Um, you can always just make a little friends guild. Lots of people do that too. They just wind up with a, a, a dead guild in the end because only one person's still playing after like months later, you know? So super up to you what you're looking for. Super up to you what you're looking for. If you guys are looking to make meet more people to play with, then yeah, absolutely join an existing guild. Great question. Do you have any, uh, after that little uh, discussion, do you have any ideas of what you might, what you might go do? Pogmeets! Pogmeets, you're almost at a year of supporting with Prime. Thank you. Thank you very much. And hey, Carlos, over on YouTube. All right, let's go over the news. Today's sale of the day is Jedi Knight Revan's armor set. Okay, so this is a super, super popular armor set. It is based off of 
a kind of obscure thing in Knights of the Old Republic. It's basically Revan's robes, but but uh, with white, lighter colors. So light brown leather and creamish colored cowls, I guess you could say. And it's a really nicely textured armor. And it also comes with a hood up and hood down version. Now, it is 1,300 cartel coins. So it's not cheap, not at all. It's about three months worth of free cartel coins from subscribing or like over a year of free cartel coins from a security key. So it's not inexpensive, but is it is considered kind of a highly desirable set. Um, so if you've been looking for this one or like this one or have a Jedi character that might like it and you've been saving up coins for something, this is a really good, useful, not useful, nice looking set to get. I really quite like this one. And if you pop a, it's either a red black or black red dye, neither of which is very expensive, you can get a, a really sweet looking uh, dark side Revan armor set too, which I really like. Um, so that's the sale of the day. Update 7.5 is the one we're looking forward to. I was hoping, I was hoping we would have more information by today. Today is Friday. Maybe they'll post it later today. That's still possible. Um, but uh, in the end, they said that they would be doing a developer live stream in April. We're April 19th on Monday. It will be April 22. So they could always announce it sometime next week and still have time to do it, but they're running out of time. But sometimes they only announce it like a week before, and that's actually not been a huge issue, in my opinion. Is Shroud of Memory still on sale? That's a good question. Let's take a little sneaky peeky. I'm hoping that's one of those things that kind of stays on sale. It's kind of a weird thing to sell it all. Yeah, it's still 55% off, JR. Hey there, Corson. Hi, hi. Little pork. I like these little guys, they're super cute. Okay, so uh, the most recent update that is actually live is update 7.4.1. And you guys can learn more about any of these things I'm talking about uh, for the news on sotorusa.com slash events. So update 7.4.1 had date night, had the Copero stronghold and had galactic season six, which we have been running. Hey, Jovi Jove, thank you. Oh, Jovi Jove, you wanted to finish off that hype train. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you guys so much for the, the support. This is uh, what allows me to keep doing this, you know? Uh, Caesar says, that armor was the secret Star Wars robes you could gain only if you're maxed out on light side points, which was kind of hard in the first run. That's right. Hang on. Let's see if we can find Revan light side <sighs> Star Forge robes. Yeah, here we go trying to find like oh that's so cool sorry <laughs> i got distracted i think it's 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 kind of hard to find a uh solid in-game picture of it these are like actually mods with the mask i don't know yeah i think it's more like nope this is a reskin how do i find the original i guess it would be this but yeah, it's a pretty, pretty cool set of ropes. And uh, in, in game in SOTOR, the texture is really nice. Um, so let's see. Uh, anyone who participated in the Operation Decoration Drop Contest, I promise I did not forget you. I'm just behind. The bounty event is coming up. Oh, no, no, it's running right now today. It, at this weekend's basically the last days to participate in it. It will be over by Tuesday when Tuesday rolls around. PvP Season Season 5 is currently rolling. We did some of that yesterday. Um, Galactic Season Season 6 is currently running. And we've been doing some of that. And all of that's, like I said, sotorisa.com slash events. Um, nothing on the dev tracker. I was really hoping we'd hear about the uh, upcoming developer live stream, so I had some news, but the, 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 that's it. Uh, Phantom says, I think they'll announce it for next week, just in time to announce Double XP for May the 4th weekend. Oh, wouldn't that be awesome? Jessa says, hopefully nothing happens on Monday. I have to go to Ottawa to see my daughter. Listen, I have some great news, Jessa. Even if the news happens when you're busy, you still get to benefit from all the news when you're not, like when you get home. We'll have dissected it and found all the weird issues and stuff like that by then and, and made a big list of questions for us to ponder over. And you can come, you can come. All right, um, Dark set. Oh, Dark also on YouTube really likes the the light side Revan armor set there. Yeah, it's a good looking one for sure. So today um, I'm just going to be doing very chill activities. Today is a great day 
to ask any questions about the game. I decided uh, after the, the chaos of PvP yesterday, since I completed my Galactic Season, I was just going to kind of chill out maybe. Where am I at on the track for PvP seasons? I am at level 9. With credits, I can unlock up to level 15. But I'm still pretty far away from, from being able to get anywhere towards uh, level 25 this season, unfortunately. Phantom says, very chill activities, nightmare mode operations with pickup groups. Listen! No. <laughs> That's too much. No. Oh, Jessa says, if my husband drives, then I can see the news. That's funny. Jessa, you guys can, like, swap off just for, like, the, the hour that the live stream's on or half hour or whatever it is. That's funny. Montego says, I think Arenas yesterday felt a lot more chill to me than Warzones. <laughs> I'm glad it did. Were, did. were you queuing up for Warzones and Arenas at the same time, Montego? I was thinking a lot about yesterday about, about um, the different ways of playing PvP. Hello. Player. Zok Kuve. And uh, so today I was just going to... Oh, I have so much mail in my mailbox, don't I? Oh my gosh. Oh, Ayo! Oh, is this so I can pay back Intazar? Oh my gosh, I owe Intazar... <gasps> don't I owe Intazar like a billion credits? I need to check in with him on how much I owe him. Hang on, let's do that right now. Oh my god. I think I owe him like a billion credits. I think, oh my gosh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me see even how, <gasps> Intazar, oh my god, hi, Intazar's here. Intazar said I want my two dollars. You no, know, I owe you way more than two dollars. Let's see what I got. Apparently I have 72 million credits. I know there's more elsewhere. 265 on this character. Okay, we gotta we gotta get this cash money to Intizar some somehow some way. How are we gonna do this? How are we gonna pay the man? Intizar says keep it. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I've I've stolen your money, and gave it to the economy. Oh. Oh, what? How much money does that character have? That we did the event on. So for anyone who wasn't there, um. I believe it was last Friday, I did my online birthday party and I did a bunch of giveaways of items. I gave away probably close to 50 plus items from the cartel market and it costs us money to trade stuff from the cartel market now. Um, the idea is to keep people from circumventing the GTN tax. Send it COD. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, I need, to send, I need to send a few people their prize who weren't there at the time. It was for the community. You're for the community. Well, let's start with, does this character have any? Okay, this character already has 572 million left. So I'm gonna start. Galaxia sent me credits too. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay, so Intazar. Is that your name? Is, is, is it literally just Intazar? I think so. I hope so. Yes. Okay. Let's start by sending Intazar. Oh, man. It charges me credits to send it back to Intazar. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> okay. A subject is required. Here is... Uh, here is your money back. Don't send anyone to break my legs. I'll pay the other half later. <laughs> It's a scam. Okay, I sent you I sent you half. I have exactly nine credits left. No more, no less on this character. They're getting my money coming and going. Right. Isn't that funny? I didn't even I, I didn't even think about that. Was to pay you back that I would have to I think we wasted somewhere along the lines of like hundred twenty million just transferring credits. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Goodbye, cash money. Okay, and so I do have at least a couple of these left over. So I'll have to... Oh, my inventory is so full of stuff. It doesn't know what to do. 
these are the ones I think we have left over. And I'm probably going to delete this character. Probably going to delete this character once I've made sure everything's all good. Form a trading guild just for this, right? That would have been... <laughs> Intisar Sotarista's trading guild. Wouldn't that be funny? Just for the two of us on, like, random alts. Okay, I think this character's safe to delete now. She was literally just made for the party, and I didn't even really get to use her except for some screenshots. It's a solid outfit, though. I like it. Good outfit for, for beach day here. Here, let's take one final screenshot. Um... I wish I could have that as a background. This will do. This will do. Oh! Oh, I'm not allowed to take screenshots. I'm not allowed to take screenshots or video right now. It's very important. I'm in the middle of currently transferring all... Let's see if I'm able to show you this. I don't know if it'll come up. This up? Oh, okay. I'm in the middle of transferring all 688,000 files. 688,000, 688,430 items. So mostly, mostly images and thumbnails and stuff like that. Middle of transferring all of these from the Tor Fashion Archive onto a different hard drive. And so, oh my gosh, it's been running since yesterday and it's still only at 29%. But I'm not supposed to touch that that uh, hard drive until till it's done, if I can. If I can, if possible. Goodbye, spa day. It was nice knowing you. Dun, dun, dun. Have a good one, DCH. Okay, so we were going back to do some, some Kesson's Landing there. JR says, it's like a reverse laundering scheme. You get less money the more you move it around. <laughs> Uh, hey Noble, Noble nice to see you over on YouTube. Noble says I accidentally deleted the new stronghold quest. Is there a way to get that back? Um, so Noble, you are in the <laughs> hallowed category of absolute ding dongs. <laughs> deleted their quests and items and stuff like that. It cracks me up every time. So uh, you're very lucky Noble. Um, a couple players did this type of thing early on. <laughs> Hi buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm absolutely roasting you. I'm sorry. Um, uh, players were doing this uh, very commonly in the first season, which was pretty pretty funny. Um, and so the developers did develop a bit of a fail safe. So first off, um, Galactic Seasons. If you go into Galactic Seasons, um, Season 6, on the last page, you might be able to find it there. And if you go on the character who originally claimed it, who originally had the quest, you should be able to get another copy for free without having to pay cartel coins. So transfer a copy to your inventory. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that'll do it for you. However, if you're not missing the quest, but instead you're missing um, the ability to unlock the stronghold, like not the little quest with the quest marker, but the, the stronghold itself. Oh, why did I do that? Why did I leave Kesson's Landing? I was going to show you the fleet, but I'm pretty sure you... Of all people are already familiar with the fleet. Um, you go to the supplies and strongholds section. And if you're familiar with it, you go to the galactic seasons section. Um, there's like a little terminal there for the new Copero stronghold. Let me know if that was useful for you. I'm going to show you the, the terminal real fast just in case that's the issue you're having. Because I've noticed people have been having issues with one, the other, or both. Like they're very related. And this goes for anyone else. If you have a friend who accidentally deleted their Copero stronghold, send them to the uh, supply section of the fleet. Supply section, supply section, and send them to the area where the Galactic Seasons vendors are. And there is a Copero stronghold terminal, and that'll usually let you fix it if you go to the purchase section. It'll usually let you do something or other to it, you know, to get to get it back if you already had it in some way or another. It's a bit funky. It's a bit of a funky system, but they did add fail safes. They're just not necessarily easy to find. Let me know if that worked for you, Noble, if you're <laughs> still lost and sad. Um, so we're going to be going back to Kesson's Landing because I am a big ding dong and left even though I wanted to do the quests there. Uh, let's drop weekly Kesson's Landing because then we can get back there quickly. And so Kesson's Landing is uh, the newest daily area. And a daily area is a area that is not really part of the main quests in the game. 
they're usually not often not anywhere in the main storyline um, of the base game but they're repeatable the idea is that they're very repeatable and meant to be repeatable on the same character and they often have unique cosmetic rewards that you can't do any other way they're kind of i would say the end game for solo players who just like to quest who aren't looking to do flash points or like pvp or operations they're like the repeatable thing for for solo players and there's quite a few of them at this point okay so i'm on kesson's landing uh i think i already picked up the quests because i have attention issues i think so Tababata really wants to share <laughs> some tips about Wookiees. Tip for the day, you can hug a Wookiee, you can feed a Wookiee, you can even let a Wookiee win, but never ever rub a Wookiee's for the wrong way. Good day, everyone. <gasps> what happens if you do? Do you have to go get out your little grooming brush and like chip, 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 and make sure it's going the right way? <laughs> okay, so what do I always do wrong when I do Kesson's Landing? Okay, step one, get a companion. Get a companion. Let's get our friend Lana Benica out here. Step two. Uh, normally I would set her as a healer. But. I've decided. That she's going to be DPS. And I am also going to go DPS. But I think I have to clear my inventory out a little bit first. This happens on a fairly regular basis at this point. So what's been going on in Star Wars news? Oh, Star Wars May the 4th is coming up soon. I'm really looking forward to that. I, it is going to be on a Saturday. Talonair says, are you supposed to show up in your activity? I think I, I, think I need some more uh, context for those. Oh, are those supposed to show up in your activity log? Um, so if you're talking about activities solo. Ah, I think I know what you're asking. Are you seeing, even on your like low-level characters, that Manon, Runic, and Odessin are there? I'm guessing that's what you're seeing. Um, they made a change a while ago, and they're still kind of updating it, so that you could uh, pick up these quests and run the dailies, even if you're not caught up with the story, if you've done it at least once on any of your characters. They're still kind of tweaking the system, and there's still some funny stuff, like being able to pick up uh, Kesson's landing at like level one <laughs> on additional characters. Um, but in general, it's just a nice little change that gives you more ability to choose which characters you are playing on, which I'm always, always a fan of, you know? I actually don't know which way I'm going. I'm going around this edge here, but I think I may be making a stupid life choice. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna quick travel up there to the north because that usually, usually is a good spot, I think. What are your predictions, asks Favrin, when it comes to 8.0? That's a great question. So we know that 7.5, we're going to be learning about it sometime this month. The last update was 7.4, then 7.4.1. Um, 7.4.1 was the smaller one, and 7.4 had story and stuff like that. And we know 7.5 will have a continuation to the story. So... I know a lot of players really like expansions because they bring you a big glut of content. Are you doing the world boss? I think I did it Tuesday. I think I bullied everyone to do it Tuesday. So I think I've already completed my, uh, my weekly for it. So I probably won't today. Yes, as much as I'd like to do it over and over and over and over and over. Oh, Platinum. Wow, Platinum says. Damn, I'm really behind on the story. There are daily areas I haven't seen yet. Yeah, right. This is the newest one. This is the newest one. It's quite cool. It's actually on Org Mantel. Um, <sighs> Darn it. Oh, predictions. Okay, so uh, I like to go over the, the what happened in the past so we can guess towards the future. Um, so there have been some major changes since the last expansion and the last expansion itself was a bit of an anomaly. So the previous expansions before 7.0, well, none of them were perfect or anything like that. And they weren't always beloved by everybody. Some people liked Knights of the Fallen Empire, some people didn't. But I think everybody 
can successfully agree even e even though each of the previous expansions 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, 6.0 um, they were expansions. 6.0 was on the smaller side of expansion, but it was still an expansion. 7.0 was a big mess. Platinum says, yeah, I've been off this game for about 10 years. I played for a long time, but it's been a good rush getting back into it. I only recently finished Coffee and I loved it. Hey, that's awesome. Welcome. Uh, here, I have something very special for you. Welcome back to the game, little Porg baby, just for you. Rikoji says, is galactose season suitable for those with irritable bowel syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Rikoji. Uh, speaking of IBS, um, I found out, so I can't drink dairy. I had, on a whim, I had leftover orange juice and oranges from, from my tree. And I just got stuck in a rock. And I was like, I wonder if I can make orange Julius. Like the drink you would get at the mall. I wonder if I can get additional orange Julius. No, 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 no. Dairy-free orange Julius. Like, could I make that at home? If I have orange juice, what else would I need? And I made some last night. You can make it with coconut milk. Like, you want the chunky coconut milk, not the thin one. Like, the one you get in a can was, was perfect. It's pretty decent. It was not quite as frothy as I wish it could have been. But I'm going to keep tweaking it and see if I can find it. It was still pretty freaking good. I was super, super happy little camper. Oh, Chloe says, hi, I'm a bit behind on the story and haven't done Kesson's Landing yet due to reports of bugs really into story quests for the area. Are those fixed now? Hey, Kaleli. Um, Kaleli, I'm trying to think because obviously you know I kind of pay attention when people are reporting a lot of bugs with an issue. See if I can find workarounds and stuff like that. Um, I don't remember anyone saying there's any major issues related to this one, to be honest. I, I ran it through bug free and I, I can't off the top of my head remember any specific ones. Not that there wasn't any, just that there wasn't any like overarching huge ones. So I'd go for it. Also, is there, there a better flow for the dailies in Kessin's Landing compared to Runic where you had to go back and forth on the map? Kalali, yes. Kessin's Landing is way better uh, than Runic when it comes to the flow. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I don't know how far you are in the story, but they they made the flow better in the previous daily area, too, on, um, is this a, it's showing me, like, an entryway. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Um, Voss, Interpreter's Retreat, is also better than Runic <laughs> when it comes to flow. Oh, my gosh. Runic, I love Runic. It's such a cool area, but, oh, my gosh, the flow. So bad. Hey, Brinster. Hello. Friendster says, hey, Sotrista, glad I could catch the stream again. I just got done with my business season at work. What is your favorite Sotor class storyline? I love the Imperial Agent. I really like the Imperial Agent, Friendster, over on YouTube. Um, the one that I tend to replay over and over, though, is the Sith Inquisitor. Hey, Nasasu, Nasasu says the spice must flow. Go watch Dune 2 if you haven't yet. It's good stuff. I really liked it. It's getting extended in the theaters. Dark Clouds over on Twitch says, Love your streams. I haven't played since Legacy of the Sith because I don't currently use a Windows PC. And your streams are my way of getting my fix. Dark Clouds. Uh, if you're using, say, like, a MacBook, there's actually a way to run SOTOR and quite a few people do it. Uh, let me pull up the link for you. Reddit SOTOR. How to play on a Mac. This is by a really nice player, and it's going to be a Reddit link in chat. A really nice player called Agent, and Agent was was posting guides on how to play on a Mac for like literally years. Ah, Dune comes to streaming on May 1st, so there you go. You can watch it there too if you're the kind of person who can't or, or doesn't like to leave the house. Are the red glasses a fashion choice? They are, uh, I wouldn't say they are medical. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not quite a fashion choice either. And they're just one of many things people suggested for headaches. Um, I don't think they're really helping with the headaches, but they are helping a bit with the glare while playing. So they're kind of cute. I really don't hate them. I really don't hate them, to be honest. I think they suit me well. Oh, the saboteur story wasn't triggering. You're right. I do remember that happening oh, with Kessin's Landing. I do remember them addressing it somewhere in the dev tracker, Kaleli, but I don't remember off the top of my head if they fixed it or not. 
Kaleli, do you have my contact on either Discord or Twitter? Ideally Discord. It's at Satrista. Um, but if you do, send me a message on Discord and I'll try and find it for you later if you don't want to dig through the dev tracker yourself. I promise I'll come back to the what do you think of the expansions. That's just a half an hour long question. <laughs> Um, so Black over on YouTube says, hello, first time catching you live. I've started playing about two months ago. Hey, welcome to the game then. And you've been my guardian angel <laughs> in this game. Thank you for your passion and dedication towards the game for so many years. Hey, welcome to the game. That's funny. Um, thanks for saying I'm your guardian angel, even though I've never met you before. <laughs> Um, but I'm glad you're enjoying all of the resources. I don't know if you've only seen the YouTube, but there is a whole bunch more on satrista.com. Like a ridiculous amount of resources in addition to the YouTube videos, which I haven't been making many of lately. Ah, Kaleli, you're in the, you're dis you're in the Discord. Perfect. But can you send me like a, a private message? Like, a, like a, I think they're called a DM, like where you click my name and send it to me. That way I'm less less likely to lose it along the way. Okay, so let's see. I think I need to press this button over here. Unless you're running old CRT monitors, the blue UV light exposure from modern, modern monitors is next to zero. Yeah, so when I was Googling these glasses and, and glasses in general, blue light glasses, um, basically, as far as I can tell, there's no scientific studies that show blue light glasses actually help. However, with that said, a lot of people who say they have migraines or headaches um, have said that it helps them in some way, which is really funny. Maybe it's just placebo effect. <laughs> um, so I decided to try them out. Like for, for like what, 20 to 40 bucks. It's not gonna break my pity, piggy bank if it helps in any way. Um, but like I said, I don't think it's helping like medically in any way, but I do appreciate the lack of glare. So you guys, you guys just have your monitors. I also have, especially when I'm streaming, a big flood, basically like a floodlight. Um, so otherwise I'd be really dark and you guys wouldn't be able to see my beautiful face. Well, you wouldn't be able to see my expressions is the, is the biggest reason I use a camera at all. Me making goofy faces. Uh, everything's a little blurrier and less defined. Your eye doctor can run tests if you're sensitive to certain color spectrums? Wow. I never knew that. That's interesting. What happened to Lana Padico? <gasps> she died? When did that happen? Okay, we gotta pull out some stops here. Uh, and do what we can do. We gotta kill this kitty before it kills us. I did not know that. Apparently silent is sensitive to both blue light and white light. Interesting. I do know that I personally have uh, some type of photophobia. Is that the right word? Some type of light sensitivity uh, compared to other people. Um, whether it's an eyeball thing or a different thing, I don't know. I just know that I have to wear it. Like the, ha the more sunglasses I have, the happier I am in my life. And this does seem to help with like the glare. Black says, I'm always checking up stuff on your website as well. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. And there you go, Clelly. I'll, I'll see what I can do. No promises <laughs> about when it'll happen, but I'll try for sure. Oh, hey. Remember I was going to switch over to, to stealthing. Let's start by getting getting a lot of Banika out. Second, I was trying to clear my inventory, but I'm pretty sure I made it even messier instead. Getting there, getting there, getting there. Okay, let's sell some junk, sell junk, sell this random item. Okay. We're looking in a little slightly better shape now for uh, <laughs> being able to switch over with this character to a different discipline. That's so funny. You can get prescription glasses without poor vision. Yeah, I guess I technically could. I don't know why I would bother. The glasses aren't cheap. Bruh. Mr. Sotorisa, we have to buy him glasses and I'm always like, huh! <laughs> Medical expenses. 
Oh, a Killigan says, I've got deep blue eyes. I'm very sensitive to that spectrum and tend to use sunglasses and regular glasses, but anti-blue spectrum and it helps. Oh, interesting. Justin says, my son wears teal tinted glasses to help him. Oh, also interesting. Very interesting all around. But yeah, so half fashion, half pseudoscience is why I'm wearing the glasses. <laughs> oh, interesting. Clally says, I developed photo light sensitivity after COVID and I have glasses with reddish glasses as well. But for me, they help better when outside rather than indoors at my computer. Yeah, I got a matching, I got a matching set that are even darker for, for outside. It was like a two, two piece set. Um, I've, I've had like sensitivity to light, like most, most of my life, I think. I wish I'd started. I thought sunglasses were lame, so I didn't wear them for a long time. <laughs> I feel really stupid about it. Probably would have appreciated it. Okay, back to that question. Back to the question about what about the expansion? What are your predictions? Did I, like, I'm gonna change out of my bathing suit here. Ta-da. But now I can stealth, which should, should speed things up a little bit. Ha ha ha, sneakerific. Um, so 7.0 expansion was a bit of a mess compared to the previous expansions. They launched it really late. When they launched it, it was missing a whole area, like all of Manon Daily area was there. They m were missing the operation that was supposed to go with it. They released those two things like a month or two later, but still it wasn't with the expansion. So what was, <laughs> like why? And the expansion was delayed to start with. And then when the expansion did actually launch, it uh, had some really major bugs all around. Um, one of the big ones being many players couldn't progress their story for a long time due to a bug. And uh, there's just lots of little bugs with new stuff they'd added related to combat styles. Like there's just so many, it was very frustrating. So the last time they did an expansion, it did not go well, is what I'm getting at, right? So the next, they need to m figure out, they probably already figured it out by now, but um, they need to establish what caused that to be such a poor release and what can they do in the future to make sure that doesn't happen again for 8.0 if they ever get there so i don't actually know if they ever will make an 8.0 and neither does anybody else um if they did they might by the end of this year it's a possibility but it's not a given so 7.0 came out and it was a piece of garbage. Well, it wasn't say a piece of garbage, but it was a really mess. A mess is, I think, a better uh, adjective. And then, later on after that, the SOTOR video game and most of the people who worked on it, like 90% of the people who worked on it. Is that something I could scan? Maybe it's not. I am a little confused. I'm gonna go down here. Let's try from here. It changed studios from Bioware to Broadsword. So, uh, most of the same people went over, which was a really positive thing, but um, we don't really know what's changed in terms of goals. Oh, that wasn't it. Keep scanning, okay, okay. So they've been doing good with updates so far, in my opinion. I'm pretty happy with updates 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, 7.4.1. I think those were good for being the non-expansion updates. And I'm pretty happy with kind of everything overall, I guess. I'm pretty happy with the momentum of the game, the communication from the devs, um, the lack of it being as bad as when 7.0 launched. Like. Of course there's bugs there's always going to be bugs but nothing was as bad as that since then so i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty happy they've also been doing some really interesting stuff in the background like uh addressing inflation over a long period of time they updated the game to 64-bit they updated the game to have cloud servers um they did other infrastructural things that i think are really cool for the for the long-term longevity of the game 
So I'm generally happy with what they're doing, and I'm not really concerned about the fact that uh, Broadsword owns it now over Bioware. But I don't know if their goals are to make an expansion. Their goals may instead be to continue with these 7.1, 7.2, 7.3, 7.4, 7.5 kind of things. I don't know. Um, we do know that expansions generally tend to create more hype. They tend to get people more excited, uh, more interested to come back than a smaller update. Like, wow, there's an expansion to the game. I should hop back in, you know? Um, however, Bioware at least, and I don't know if this will apply to Broadsword too, has always been kind of terrible at, what am I supposed to be doing here? Looking in darkness apparently, disable separatist mines. They've always been really bad at like marketing. I don't know if it's because they don't put the budget towards it, like instead they put their budget towards other things, um, or if EA doesn't give them money specifically to promote stuff, but they've just always been really bad at it. And um, if you go look at the bumps in the numbers, maybe it's not worth it for them to do expansions in terms of the time and effort compared to people who come back and what they pay. So I don't really... <laughs> Montego says, I agree. They have been terrible at disabling separatist mines. I'm sorry, carrying like three threads at once. EA is more of a money taker than a giver. Well, they are the publisher. I don't really quite understand the connection between the publisher, the studio, and the copyright owner. I, I can't say I fully understand that. Um, they're like three separate things and they're not, they have different connections to each other. Um, so EA, I'm sure if they thought they could get X amount percentage extra revenue from putting marketing budget, I'm sure they would, but I'm not even sure the budget comes from them. Like I'm super unclear how that works. I don't think we'll ever get like a solid answer. Separatist poacher, I need to go attack these guys. But how? <gasps> Who's that? Hey, Norakis. Hello. Hello there. What were you guys up to on your stream? Hi. Hi, hi, hi. Da -da. Da -da. We're just doing a really chill day. We're talking about like what might 8.0 be like while I'm running dailies. Ba -da 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 -da. Okay. Passkey. Nice. Got everything we needed here now. All in once. So far, as I have heard from PPI, there's been zero advertising marketing in the entire new APAC region, so that may be a clue. Um, that's not entirely true. I do know that, or at least it appears that uh, Bioware, Bioware, oh my god, Broadsword, I assume the community team, though I wouldn't actually know, reached out to all of the Aussie like, coverage websites, you know? Like anyone who do any websites that are news related for gaming that would be in the Aussie sphere, I know they reached out to them. Because some of them posted stuff about the new APAC servers opening. But I don't know if they would do any marketing specifically for that. If I was doing marketing, I would save it for something bigger, like an expansion, and also be like, hey, and do it as like a tack on. Play on Asia Pacific servers, you know? He is a financier and some marketing. Bioware Broadsword is a maker and runner. Yeah, Affected says the cinematics are amazing. I agree. They're super cool. But once again, whether those people draw people into the game, I have no idea. Like, in terms... Like, obviously they do, but like, in terms of percentage and cost. I think they could promote it, says Lamented. Of course. Of course they could. It's just whether it's worth it or not. Should I get subscriber if I'm not level 60 yet? Hey there, Donzo on Twitch. So in general, I like to tell people, if you're playing really regularly, like two to three times a week or more kind of thing, not just like once a month, it's definitely worth it to subscribe just because you're playing so much, you benefit the most from it compared to someone who's playing very casually. Um, the only time that you need to subscribe is once you hit 60, so if you want to like continue leveling or once you reach the end of the story so you can continue um, unlocking the story if you want. And you don't even have to stay subscribed after that because all of the story and level ability will stay unlocked even after you unsub. 
So if you're looking to subscribe, now is not a horrible time uh, to do it. Because you'll get all the perks and stuff even after you unsub. Oh, excuse me. Um, however, there's no really reason to if you're if you're still leveling and you're mainly playing the story and you are, especially if you're you're low on cash or, or you're trying to save. Not really a right or wrong answer. What am I doing here? What is my actual quest objective? Retrieve treatment from head poacher. Oh, this guy. Murder. Murder needs to happen. Black says, do you think they'll update the user interface anytime soon? GTN and Ban UI feels miserable to use. <laughs> the GTN actually recently got updated black. I wouldn't say the UI was done to be user friendly or anything, but they did, they made some major back end changes and made a new UI to match. Um, I think they're still adjusting that, so they probably wouldn't make it prettier or friendlier until they're done testing that. Otherwise, I might be wasting time making a whole visual changes for something that has to be totally changed in a month or two, you know? <laughs> oh, just a second. I'll be right back. Oh, the bank is miserable to use and that's the bank there's nothing wrong with the bank itself it's literally just like a pool of items uh what's more frustrating is like the overall way that items are stored interacted and traded and moved around and stuff like that and that's a whole system that would be a huge change um that would be awesome if everything was easier to find like a search or like your items be pulled together between characters better or you know Spend less time inventory managing. Um, but same thing, once again, is it is it worth the time that they'd be putting into it compared to creating uh, content for people to play or content that players would be more excited about and would be willing to resubscribe or pay for or start playing when they weren't before or return to the game, you know? Those are like the kind of, or be willing to continue playing if they weren't necessarily going to before. Like, you know, metrics and stuff like that. I don't I don't have any way to measure those as a as an outsider. And it's probably some of them are difficult to measure even even internally. Epic Jester says I started farming the remnant sets from Kotfi and Kotet boxes. My inventory is in shambles. Oh my gosh. Ha <laughs> ha Yeah, that's those are there are a lot of those. So tri tricks to collecting the remnant sets. One. They're legacy bound, so start throwing them into your legacy bay. Two, they are legacy bound, so have or create characters whose only job is to throw them into your GTN. Like, I have characters. I have a spreadsheet where I track my characters. Third, when you collect a whole set, check that it unlocked in collections, and then there's no reason for you to keep it anymore after that. You can get rid of it. You don't gotta keep it. And it's only 10 CC, unless it's like a set you really want and you don't want to pay the 10 CC to, oh no, you just, it's fine. You d and just claim it on the character who first collected it, yeah? <laughs> Some jammers like, give me 10 cargo hold and legacy bank tabs right now. Yeah, they have to be careful when they give us more anything, more slots of any type of unlock. If you make things too big, don't forget, it's not you getting 10. It's every character that's ever been made in every existence for every play around every server. That, uh, uh, even just adding, like, one more singular inventory slot would be a huge addition to whatever database they're using or however, however that's used. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I don't know that much about database management, just like with the very basics. Oh no, I just poured water all over the floor. Clean it up later. But the cloud, infinite storage. <laughs> okay, you still have to pay for it. It is. Um, from what I understand, more importantly than the amount of storage, because you can just buy more storage, you know? Pay a few extra more cents or whatever. Um, the bigger problem is searching the database. 
So let's say you only have like three players in the game. Looking up those players, looking up those players, like imagine a Google search, you type something in and you get results. Looking up those players and, and the game like finding out what are their characters list? What are their achievements? How many credits do they have? It has to do these little lookups for all of these things. And the more, the more entries of, oh no, I'm gonna die. Well, I can stealth out, but I forgot where it is. Uh-oh, spaghetti -o. What is the button? Stealth out. There we go. Let's go heal up. Save me, Lana Benico. The more entries there are, the longer it can take to look stuff up. So every time someone creates a character, it technically makes the database bigger and slower. <laughs> and so database management is a whole field of study on itself. And it's how to manage large sets of data, how to optimize them, how to store them properly, how to connect them together and how to make it not slow. Yeah, I wish we had transmog collections. Oh my God, me too. That's a big one I'd wish. That would be a big database indeed, right? <laughs> um, so that's why there's all kinds of weird little... What am I supposed to be doing here? Oh, I'm supposed to be defeating droids and, and people and stuff. I didn't realize that. My bad. Can I do some right here? Yeah, these guys. Um, so... Every time you find weird artificial limits, like why am I only allowed 16 outfits? Or now it's 32, they upped it. Why am I only allowed X amount of decoration? Oh, so, okay, some of them are database, some of them are your computer's gonna crash if too many of these load at once. But uh, for a lot of the artificial limits, that's, that's why. That's, that's why. Others are like game mechanics and creating uh, scarcity and stuff like that. And others are, your computer gonna explode. Down, you gotta go download more RAM, that's right. You sure do. <laughs> Kurgon says, hey there, new SOTOR player here. First of all, thanks for the content. They're right now. Two tabs open with your videos to finish. <laughs> Wanna ask why are most of the range classes categorized as weak? I feel like the player base mostly plays melee and Jedi Sith. I really wanted to play Commando, but it looks like it's been the worst class ever since forever. Hey there, great question. Um, I'm about to die. Just a second. As I play my melee character and stand right in the fire. Oh! How does Lana Benico keep dying? What's been killing her? I haven't been noticing. <laughs> oh. oh, hey there, Valentium. I'm glad. Thanks for coming over to post it here too. I like try and bounce back and forth the best that I can. Okay, so let's see. Um, a Valentinium, I'm gonna post this one on ye on Twitch just to make it easier for me. So we have this wonderful little thing called Parsley. Um, Parsley, and it's a, a tool that players use to upload their stats. So I don't know if you've seen this or not yet. I'm hoping you have because it's the main kind of source of information that most players use when they uh, talk about what's weak or what's strong. Oh. Did it change? Where's the cute little one? Hey, where'd the cute one go? Oh, I'm stupid. I'm going, I'm on the wrong page, hang on. Please ignore. <laughs> hey, where'd that thing go that wasn't there to start with? Here we go. This is the little chart I'm looking for. So yeah, like in WoW parsing, pretty much exactly the same. Um, so this is a specific fight um, it's not necessarily, there's no like best fight to test this on, but this is a pretty decent one that people like to use. I like to use this one as a benchmark. It's one of the newer ones. Hey there, Jamalman. Hey, Zid. The cute one went, went out on a date. Lana Benico left me to go on a date? Who'd she go with? Theron Sean? Is that why she's dead on the floor right now? Did Theron finally exact his revenge on her for that one time on Rishi? <sighs> Okay, so here's the chart. And this is not an exact science chart. This also doesn't uh, talk about multiple enemy attacks. It only talks about really a single enemy attack. Um, it's a specific boss. Okay, so why are range classes lower down? And question mark, are they? Are they? And that's, I think, an important question too. Are you going off of player talking or are you going off of 
data. Because <laughs> player talking, especially if it's only coming from one person's mouth, is not always the most useful. And sometimes even kind of uh, anecdotal stuff that gets passed down over time is not always correct either. Like one friend tells another friend tells another friend and it just kind of carries on until it's become a, a legend, even if it's not true in the first place. <gasps> Dark Cloud said, am I hearing KOTOR music? You sure are. Yeah, there's uh, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2 music in this game, which I love. I can't remember if this is KOTOR music. I don't think it is. I, I think it's similar to some stuff from KOTOR 2, though. Okay, so this chart. Focus and Rage is generally the one that's saying that it can parse the highest. However, it can also parse right down the middle, too. It depends how good you are. So here's the worst players who submitted. Here's the best players who submitted. So Focus and Rage were the ones that uh, people were able to submit the highest pew pew. Hey Zid, are those the blue light? Yes, yes, they're blue light glasses. I'm trying them out. Um, so focus rage is melee. So it's like, yay, I'm on top. And then next up is plasma tech pyrotech. We're gonna go look up pyrotech really fast. Come on, internet. Thank you. It's a short range class, but you can use many of your abilities even if you're far away. So it's kind of, it's mostly melee. Mostly melee, sort of, but yeah. Um, Ruffian Lethality is the punching one, if I remember right. That one's definitely melee. Assault Specialist and Innovative Ordnance. So I don't play a lot of these actually, which is funny. You love your power tech? Aww. Oh, hang on. That's not what I wanted. Here we go. So this is Assault Specialist. And Assault Specialist is long range. Look at that. Fourth on the list of top DPS is uh, full range. Second on the list is semi range. Serenity is melee. Tactics is melee. Vigilance is melee. Dirty Fighting is melee. Saboteur is melee. Watchman is melee. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> okay, there is, uh, there's certainly some some bit of truth to the matter, it looks like. The answer to why, in general, is one, that's how the developers made it. <laughs> Second, uh, I do know one of their philo- am I fighting something? Oh, I yeah. am. I should go help Lana Bonico. Oh, did I pull out Theron Chan because I was sick of Lana Bonico? Apparently I did this without, without thinking about it. It's funny. Um, second, they do have a philosophy that Characters who are damage over time characters, so disciplines, should do more damage than first classes over time. So damage over time classes are sometimes considered a bit harder to play, not always, um, but they do take a while longer to get rolling. But in general, over time, particularly for like bosses and stuff like that, um, they want them to have a higher number than the other types of classes. And I think dot damage, damage over time damage, um, has a tendency to be more likely to be ranged. Is that correct? That's kind of a guess. Oh, dirty fighting is ranged, my bad. I'm sorry, I'm a big liar. Apparently dirty fighting virulence is ranged. Is it? Are you sure? That's the one where you throw the knives, right? On an operative. There's 48 of them. Oh, I'm supposed to be murdering and I keep forgetting this. So I'm just stealthing by. Just got here, says Diana. What's the chart for? Hey, Diana. Diana, the chart that I'm showing is on a website called Parsley. Kind of like the vegetable. Parsley Sotor. Um, and it's kind of showing damage. A player was asking, why do it seem, but they had better grammar than me, why does it seem that all the top parsing classes are ranged. Oh, Virulence is Sniper? No, but what about Lethality? Oh my gosh, am I getting them all mixed up? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and I played all of these too. I'm just a mess. I'm just a mess. Um, so I don't, ha I have a chart somewhere. Would it be here? Would it be at the bottom of this page? Did I, did I put whether they're dots or not? Oh, I originally had that in this chart. I was saying whether they were damage over time or 
burst, but I think I took it out because it was getting too confusing in too small of a chart. Ah. Oh, no, 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 here it is. It's a different chart. So let's see. Sentinel, Guardian, Shadow. Those are all... Short range? And then we've got, like, Telekinetics and Balance, which is Madness. They'll all say whether they're ranged or not here, but I don't have a super good comparison with ranged and with dot, both in the same chart. Dark Cloud says, that's how it is in games like Guild Wars 2. D damage over time is a bit higher. In long duration fights, harder difficulty to pull off, though. So I think, and could someone correct me if I'm wrong, but are most dot classes, they would be melee if they do more damage over time? Oh my gosh, I feel so confused right now. This was a great question. Uh, Kirk, Kirgo Concast. Sorry. I feel like the player base mostly plays melee Jedi and Sith. I really wanted to play Commando, but it looks like it's been the worst class ever since forever. Yeah, so people play Jedi Sith more for the thematics than anything else. Um, Commando, for whatever reason, kind of got the shaft. I, I have no idea why. I have no idea why they never... They did boost it a little bit. It was way lower before, so that was nice to see that fixed for gunnery arsenal. But <laughs> it's still behind, yeah. I feel like I'm reading all the disciplines in Twitch chat and my eyes are like glazing over. I need a spreadsheet or go home. Ah, that was such a great question. And I wish I had an actual answer for you. But I, I yes, I need a matrix plotting melee versus range versus dot versus burst. That's exactly what I need because the more I talk, the, re the less I realize I know off the top of my head and the less I have prepared to actually look up. <laughs> oh, right. Um, we had a question from... Mike, Mike X 91 and I did miss you earlier. Um, is there a way to get uh, my hood off? Is there an item I can use to hide my hood? Yes, um, there are specific items that you can wear that have a tendency to hide your hood, which is really nice. Um, I'm trying to think if I have a list. Tor fashion hides hood. Ah, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, that's sad. I was hoping it would come up right away. Control F hood. Chest, chest, hood. Heads, hides, hoods. Yes. So here's a super big list. But I remember there was like a really useful list. Like little tiaras and stuff that would hide hood. And I don't know how to find that now that Tor Fashion's down. I know off the top of my head there's like... Zekulin security that I like. Hang on, let's see if I can find it. Zekulin. This one. Zekulin security's armor set. I like this one. This one tends to hide your hood. Just make sure to pre preview it first. Zekulin security headpiece. And there's definitely some other, cr there's a crafted one from an orange bordered schematic. That's all I can remember off the top of my head and can't remember a specific resource. Wait until you see a nice Clone Wars era TV series starring a trooper and everyone's going to be playing classes like Commando. Hello, what is Bad Batch to you, garbage? But yeah, um, just to backtrack a little bit, to backtrack a little bit, Valentium. Um, with that said, if, unless you're looking to play at the highest skill level possible, so nightmare mode operations or super, super, super skilled PvP, you can play Commando just fine. We have plenty, plenty of friends who, who play Commando and stuff like that. It's, it's not an actual issue when it comes to like the normal game. Okay, it looks like I'm getting close to done this quest. So I saw the little spinny thing disappear. Aw, oh, Anakin Skywalker, not the real one, the one on YouTube, says, It is my birthday today. Well, congratulations, Anakin Skywalker. You made it around the sun another time. Um, I like to ask on your birthday. Oh, it's just a little hidey hole. This isn't what I was looking for. I like to ask, what special treat are you going to get for yourself? What special delicious food are you going to go eat? That's the best gift you can give to yourself is your favorite 
favoritest food or snack or whatever. Ha! <laughs> Phantom in chat says, I finished, I started a new tech for Bad Batch, including a commando named Mediclare. I like the name. So I'm supposed to be doing boxes and I'm looking for an entrance to a cave, but I'm struggling to find it. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I need this little table right here. Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doo. Da da! Nice. Got it. Not just the food, but the drinks and desserts too. Yes, at least one of these three things that you like. So to our PvP did a tier PvE list and it tells what each class is ranked where. Oh, interesting. What is SOTOR PvP? Is that like a YouTube channel or something else? You can link it if you if you happen to have it silent. Yes, and PvP is a whole different beast. A whole different thing and it's less easy to quantify with a chart. Especially without ranked PvP existing anymore. Oh, nice. Um, so silent linked for you in chat, a YouTube video you could go check out. I, uh, I can't check it out right now, sadly. You started a new gunslinger called Crosshair because of Crosshair in this latest season. There you go! Literally people saying they're starting characters because of Bad Batch. But did anybody start a commando? Yes! Phantom did. His list is done for the current game build. Interesting. I don't know if I've uh, run across this player yet. If there's somebody named Sotor PvP. Or do you mean, is it Cease? Hang on, let me let me check really fast. Who this? Who this? Oh, it's literally called Sotor PvP. Interesting. Oh, it looks like their last video was nine months ago. Interesting, they do have a little channel. I don't think I've come across this one yet. Neat. Not that much has changed since June 2023. Not a ton. I think Commando might have gotten buffed since then. There was a there was a balancing update at some point, but nine months is not that long ago. I just click the buttons. Oh yeah, we are talking about what might be in an expansion. So, like I said earlier, I don't even remember who asked it at this point, sorry. Uh, I don't know if they're aiming to do expansions anymore because of the studio change. They have been doing a good job with the current updates, but whether they're still plotting or planning for 8.0, I don't know. Um, would they have time to do it this year? Yes, if they stopped making 7.5. How big it would be, I don't know. Will they repeat the mistakes of 7.0 by accident? I don't know. <laughs> and there's so many questions surrounding it. And um, the current plot is so all over the place, I couldn't even guess what it would be about. Like, I can have so many theories. I could, ha I could make up so much imaginative stuff, but whether they have the capacity to do those type of things, I don't even know right now. So tier lists, tier lists, tier lists can only be out of date if things in the game have changed since then. And I don't remember when the last major balancing patch was. They've done little ones here and there with the patches, but I know there wasn't a big one for quite a while. And I don't remember when that was. Uh, Val says I don't agree with that list. Val PVPs quite a bit. Right. You'd have to, you'd have to bring some numbers or something. And same thing with that player. I have no idea if they, what their qualifications are, or either have to go watch the video and check out their other channel. But like I said, sadly, unfortunately, we don't have as much data uh, in PVP as we do from like Parsley for bosses for single player. So it's harder to quantify. Plus, especially because, why is this guy stuck right here? Can't get him. There we go, he got knocked out. Nope, he didn't get knocked out. I'll just keep throwing knives. Hoping for the best with my giant puppy following me around here. Oh, it's a PvE list? Oh, 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 I can't read with my eyes. I'm sorry, Silent. 
Silence said, a tier PvE list and tells why each class is ranked where. Oh! Ah, I'm sorry, I saw that they also did a PvP tier list and I got the two confused. Ivano did one three to four months ago for PvP that seemed to be nice and he breaks it up for Warzone's and Arenas. Yeah, if you want to link that one, you're going to lose. Um, feel free. I think we added at least some of Ivano's guides um, to the the guide of guides for 2024. Because I do recognize that name. <gasps> 2024 is in the command? That's so sad. It's, well, it's sotarisa.com slash 2024. You guys should be able to get there. It's yourselves. DPS and PvP is pretty much impossible to measure in a tier list since PvP is about so much more like CC and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, that's why I was saying it's hard to, hard to quantify a lot of things there. And even beyond that, like, how easy is it to slap somebody with your DPS when they are running away? <laughs> like, that's a whole question of its own. Recover intel from hidden chain commanders. Oh, I see. I'm supposed to be finding specific. <sighs> You're a guy. Yeah. That guy's serious when they Sotor vibe to it. I always wanted to log into Sotor after watching the show. Aww. I think a lot of players feel that way about different uh, parts of the newer newer Star Wars media for sure. So out of curiosity, is there anyone here who's doing anything for May the 4th? Like going to any events in your city and stuff like that? Because I'm LA, there's, there's actually quite a few different ones. A lot of um, libraries are doing different things too. Uh, I think some bars and stuff are doing different things. I think I already have plans with my family that day. Oh, I'm on fire! Kill me! What are the two people I can defeat? I'm do Hidden Chain Commanders and Beast Masters. Only in this little area. Oh, here's one. That's dead. Oh, Silent says my son wants to go see the Star Wars anthology in theaters. Nice. Have fun. Have fun, you too. Or is he just going to go by himself? I don't think I could sit down for three movies in a row. I'd probably die. Oh, no. Oh, no. We uh, we pulled more than we bargained for here. Let's pop, hold the line in her own moment and see if that helps. Just long enough to get this commander. Can we out DPS the healer? No! I got stunned. There we go, we did it. Get the item! Run away! Did it. Okay, there should be one more somewhere. I have to look for it. Hey, Firekin, happy Friday to you too. Sunjammer says, I'll play Sotor on May 4th just to do something unusual, you understand. <laughs> <gasps> of course, yes. Three movies, so... Oh, not three movies. All nine movies? Is your son crazy? 22.3 hours? How do you go pee? I guess you don't care, because you're watching so many movies, you just go pee whenever you want. <laughs> you're like, it doesn't matter if I miss a little bit. I've seen this before. I just, I could not... I want my comfy couch. I want to be able to sit around in my pajamas. Wait a sec, you can do that at the movie theater, you're allowed. I bring my Snuggie with me. Like, literally a Snuggie, like the TV with the big furry Sherpa lining and the like, little arms, chicken wing arms. I bring that with me to the theater. Because I've decided I'm old and I don't care anymore what people think of me. As long as I'm warm. That's the only thing that matters in my life. You think you're gonna pass on the nine movies at once? <laughs> There's a John Williams concert, says Dark. The dark clouds anywhere. Music concert going on in a city in my country on May 4th and I'm thinking of attending. <gasps> that sounds lovely. Is it his music or is he attending? Like, is it a different conductor or is it him? I assume a different conductor. He's kinda, he's kinda busy, right? Being, being a retired person. 
I think? Question? Kaleli says over on YouTube, Sci-Fi World Convention in Malmo, Sweden next weekend. My mom and brother are members of the 501st and I recently became a member myself with a Tarkin 5 inmate costume. Oh, Narkin. Narkin 5. Narkina 5. Here we go. Narkina 5 inmate costume from Andor. Oh, that's awesome. Is So you're, you're dressed up like all the little guys that, that jump out into the water? You just have like a little white suit, I think. That's cool. That's a fun one. I don't want to fight, you guys. I just want to press the buttons. Keep them away from me! Nice. I press, I press, I press, I press. Oh, I've done it. Oh, I rolled into a wall. Leave me alone! Do it! Ah. <laughs> You'll never catch me alive! This is how we complete quests in this house. Are they beating up there in Sean or my little grazer calf? Wait, are they attacking my calf? Are they attacking him? If so, that's hilarious because he can't take damage. <laughs> um, one more to go. Ah, Mike X hopes that there will be another 50% off sale for me the 4th. We'll see. Someone else was um, guessing that they might do a double XP event instead. John Williams is the greatest of all time, but isn't he about a million years old by now? He was at a concert I went to not too long ago, if I remember right. He was the guest, not the main composer, but it was pretty cool. I think it was at the Hollywood Bowl. I'm having a hard time remembering. Oh, I am supposed to fight these guys. Just not all 15 at once. Let's start, let's start murdering. 91 years old. I can't imagine living that long. And making so much music. <laughs> Robin's like, all those ads you're skipping. Those are your quests. Darn it, darn it, darn it. I was just trying to do the quest. I'm actually not sure if I need to do this quest. I'm not sure how many I need to do total. So for my weekly daily area, I've done two out of eight. Oh, I can treat my little grazer, it says, but I like him. He's cute. Here you go, little guy. Um, transmit survey results. I think I can do that from here. I think some stuff I'm just supposed to go turn in that I haven't checked yet. I think I might go do that and see where I'm at for progress. I love picking up little friends along the way. I love picking up not savrips. Not savrips to be clear. I like picking up these little creatures like this. There's not very many of them, but they're adorable. There's some in flashpoints and stuff like that too. Okay, that one was turned in. Um, looks like I have one up north to turn into. Oh, this is the one where there's a little lighter, lighter dark decision here. Ba -da -da. Press the button. Here you go, Kesson's Landing people. Enjoy. What's this at? F five out of eight for the weekly? But I still need to go tell this little grazer where he lives. <laughs> or I could just keep him with me for the whole rest of the quest. But I think at five out of eight, he'll put me at six out of eight. Looks like I have a quest right here. I'm just not sure. Ah, here we go. Someone will have to have words with action. It's a rare sight. If only those nice. incompetent Republic soldiers could learn a thing or two from you. And then... Looks now like I have a 6 out of 8. My Turning in my little guy will be 7 out of 8. And so I should do like one more. Defeat Extreme Environment Droid. 
He's just like kind of over there. I think if I quick travel down, it's faster to run up. General kind of question, says Dark Cloud. How do you like being a Sotar content creator if you're doing it full time, that is? I can imagine the pros, but any cons? Hey, Dark Clouds, yeah. Um, so the pros, the biggest ones are, I like the Sotor. <laughs> I like it. Um, for me, the biggest one that was, was that I was already treating this like a second job and it was a little too much for me. Basically, I was commuting in LA and I was working on this on the train there and back and then I'd often come work on it on the weekends and after work. So I had very little <laughs> like rest time. I wouldn't say free time. I'm not really a free time kind of person to be honest, um, but I didn't have much rest time. So I like that now I can work on this and then when I'm not working on it, do other things that aren't working. Um, the downsides are, I guess the uncertainty, that's kind of like a content creator thing in a, in a general way, the uncertainty. I'm, I'm always at the mercy of factors that are sometimes beyond my control. Unlike like a job, either you're fired or you're not fired, you know? <laughs> like if you're not fired, you know you're gonna get your paycheck most of the time. If you have like a 40 hour work week, which I, I which is what I was doing before. Um, let's see. Oh, I just need to, I just need to kill one of these guys. Yeah, and the biggest other one for me is the flexibility of when I want to work. Like if I'm sick, I just don't work, you know? If I want to work the entire day, I can. If I want to work at 3 a.m. in the morning, I can. Um, and I get to decide what I work on too, which is, I like that a lot. So, there's no safety net. I won't- I don't wanna die! Speaking of no safety net, she's Louise. Like, uh, we're hoping, I don't know where we're at, but we're hoping to start a family at some point. There's no such thing as maternity leave for someone who owns their own business. Um, there's no such thing as, like, vacation day pay or, or like sick day pay, you know? Uh, if I get sick in any way, more permanently, there's I don't get disability pay from own, owning my own business. Here, but it definitely has lots of, of perks and I think those outweigh the cons. But hey, when they don't, I'll probably just go back to, to kind of doing what I was before. Okay, I'm gonna stab this robot isn't actually gonna die now. We had Varro ask, what did you play before SOTOR? Oh, great question. Um, so my first game that I played with other people. So I played a lot of solo games when I was little. And by little, I mean like starting age five. <laughs> um, we had a computer and I was kind of given free reign of it. Um, I played a lot of Star Wars games because that's what we had and really liked them, like the older Star Wars games. Um, but the first game that I played with other people was actually Neopets. It's very silly, Neopets on the internet. Then I played RuneScape. Uh, then I heard about Sotor and I was excited for that and tried out Lord of the Rings online. Did that, did that uh, complete my quest? Oh, not quite. Looks like I need to get some lava readings. How would I go about doing that? Ah! Robot. Do I need to go into the lava? That's where the quest marker is telling me to go. Gather readings. Do I have an item? No. You give me lava. Oh, I bet you it's more right here. <laughs> Did I find it? And then I've been playing Sotor, and since then I've also been playing Guild Wars 2 in the past, and, uh... Uh... Final Fantasy of what we've been playing on the side lately. I did it! Look, I did it! I did a great job! I found the location. Have I continued my Neopets account since the stream of Neopets? No, sorry. Oh gosh, Brenster, I read your comment in YouTube chat and it scared me. I was like, what? What? Taxes? Since you own your business, have you done monthly meetings from your personal residence and charge rent to your business? It's a really nice free tax deduction. What? Okay, so I do the thing where my space that is my office and a percentage of my electricity, internet, trash, whatever, utilities, 
is tax deductible. What are you talking about holding meetings and charging rent for myself? Oh my gosh. Would that would I have to make my home a place of business then? Dang, that gets more and more complicated, but I've never heard about that before. Are you in the US? That's an interesting one. That didn't come up on any of the articles. Uh, is this not the right location? I'm gonna scream. Maybe I have to leave and re-enter. Okay, you know what we do? You know what we do? Sotorista, Keston's Landing. We're gonna go look at Zach's guide. Zach wrote a guide about how to do all of these daily meetings with Mr. Sotorista. I love it. Stand next to the robot? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be near the robot. What is this one? Into the, no, no, it's not into the fire. Unstable readings, unstable readings. Oh, I guess I'm just dumb. Let's see. Maybe I have to stand. Oh, eh, over here. Yeah. Go. Oh. There we go. I just wasn't quite close enough. Okay. And where's the other spot? Gather readings up there? Okay. Let's get out of here, Theron Sean. Do it! That's the spot. Hey, Shelby! Hi. Shelby bullying me to stand in the spot. Thank you. Uh, I think maybe I need to go this way. Brenster says, yeah, that will replace home office deductions. I'm in the U.S. If you rent a personal residence less than 15 days a year, you don't need to claim it on your personal taxes. So just a business expense. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so funny. I, uh, I <laughs> think that might be a little, a little beyond what I'm interested in doing for tax deductions. But that's a very interesting one that I'm going to go Google later just because it's pretty funny. Pretty funny little loophole. 90s Gamer says, is there an expansion coming? Is it really an expansion? No, 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 no. We were just uh, theorizing it before. If you if you heard us talking. Uh, I don't know the fastest way to get over there. Oh, we need to go in the tunnel. Oh, we need to go in the tunnel. We need to go in the tunnel. I got it. I got it. I understand. I have the knowledge. We go into the tunnel and there is lava in here. Uh, nope. That wasn't it. I'm a liar. I am incorrect. I'm gonna go here and go around. Huh. Sunjammer suggests eat a large piece and get a waste expansion. That's right. Business. Jar says she does daily meetings with us from her home office. <laughs> it's true. Is this, is this, uh, oh, has anyone seen the John Oliver episode about, um, getting religious tax deductions or something like that like he did the he did the um steps to claim his uh his tv show as a as a religion to get tax free i should do that we meet in the same place every day right we have a core set of beliefs well so Taurus, amazing <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we quite passed some of the other checks. Up the right with the water and rocks. I think I'm kind of heading the right way now. Ah, da da! Ah, ah, ah! Here it is. I was looking for lava. I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah. So '90s gamer. I think they're. I think they're focusing on the mini updates right now. I just don't know if they will ever do an expansion or not. I have no idea. No idea. Oh, look, bird. If I lost my grazer, I'm gonna cry. I sure hope I didn't, because he's so cute. I think I have to go in here and then north. This is not a very efficient run, but that's okay. That's okay, I don't... I play too much different stuff. There's no way I'm gonna be able to memorize runs. It's okay. In tax class, my prof says he counts his home office and carves out a path from the front door to his office and calculates as a percentage of full house for tax deduction. Seems sketch to me. That's funny. I don't think I would consider my hallway my place of business, but I definitely do uh, definitely do this office room here. Because that's exactly what it is. 
Thank you for the data. It is my business expense. That's why we have this yet, room. I'll keep an eye on things. Ah, okay. How do we do? Where are we at? <gasps> ah. No. Weekly. Weekly was completed, but I never turned in my little grazer buddy. But I also lost him somewhere along the way. I'm not actually sure where he gets turned in. I thought he would be somewhere at the home base. So let's just turn these heroics off. And see if I can figure out where it is on the map. Because I want to tell them that I saved their little buddy. Okay, it's up there in the north. Hada! Baptism by blaster fire. Oh my god. If you open your hymn books to page 7.4.1c and hing, sing Hush Little Basilisk Droid. <laughs> These are silly. Very silly. Um, but yeah. So Taxes are a whole thing fast. when you own a business. Huge, ridiculous thing that wastes my life. Oh, it turned into a little grazer. Little grazer baby. Here we go. Awesome. Galactic season 7 out of 7. Baby! So what are we up to? On Monday, we'll be running an operation. I haven't decided which one yet, but an operation, a community operation. And if you would like to join us, feel free. I'm going to put a little more information in Twitch chat for those of you who wanted to sign up for notifications. I haven't been posting them till like morning of, though. I'm sorry, but it, it's pretty much every every Monday morning that I'm available. Twitch Sotor Directory. For those of you on YouTube, not a lot of videos lately, um, but feel free to go to Sotorisa.com to see all the guides and stuff like that. For those of you on Twitch, we're going to go check out... Um, Twitch Star Wars The Old Republic Directory. Can you please? Video game. Here we go. Now let's see who's online right now. Oh, look at that. Doc Got Game is um, doing a birthday celebration thing. Doc Got Game. So you guys can go say hi to him. Bye, everybody. See you later. Have a great day. Bye. See you.